Hello, thanks for joining us on Discussing Fitchburg Now, shot to you from the Workers' Credit Union Virtual Studios at Fitchburg Access Television. I'm your host, Sam Squalia, and up on, me, up on uh, the segment with me for uh, the next few minutes, I have Steve Adams, the President and CEO of the Community Foundation of North Central Massachusetts, which is uh, physically located here in Fitchburg uh, on John Fitch Highway. Thanks for uh, joining us, Steve. My pleasure to be here, Sam. Thanks for having me. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what the Community Foundation is and what kind of role the Community Foundation has been taking on in light of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, what, is, what is a Community Foundation? Uh, what do you do? Who do you serve? A lot of people don't really even know what the Community Foundation is or does. Yeah, well, it, thanks for asking because it's, it's really uh, amazing that we've been here for 18 years and community foundations have been in place in the United States since the 20s, but still very few people really understand what they're all about. And the Community Foundation of North Central Massachusetts is a nonprofit created by people who live here in North Central Massachusetts and our is to help people be more philanthropic. We're trying to help grow the amount and the quality of impact of philanthropy in the 33 communities between uh, Littleton and uh, Neshoba Valley, all the way to North Quabbin and everything in between, Fishburg, Lemister, and Gardner. So we're basically, we manage over 200 funds that individuals have been trusted with us, and we help them make grants around the region. Every year, uh, we help manage about $4 million in grants in the 33 communities here in North Central Mass. And we also have four smaller funds that the community foundation itself manages. In our normal times, we would accept applications for grants in environmental issues, education, uh, community development, and we would make annual grants to a variety of nonprofits around the region. And then from time to time, when emergencies come along, we have a critical needs fund that tries to respond to emergencies. Uh, the current COVID crisis is very unusual emergency for all of us. So we've been spending the last eight weeks in a process that typically we do once in a one time. And I'll give you an example. There was the fire that happened um, back in the fall in the condominiums uh, here in Fish. Bartley Nolan. Exactly. So we had a, two meetings of our critical committee and we made a grant to the Salvation Army that allowed to get financing into the hands of the victims of that fire. One time, it was great to be able to be helpful. Now we're in week eight of doing the same thing every week to try to address the crisis we're facing here in the COVID. So we're, we're providing funds to nonprofits like a food, shel a food pantries and homeless shelters. We're working with United Way to help people get the resources they need to manage the crisis. So in this COVID-19 pandemic, you are kind of uh, um, not only using your own funds at the Community Foundation and the funds of the community member, the, the, the multiple accounts of community members, uh, but you are also administering, um, is it state and federal funds um, from the, uh, from the um, COVID relief fund? Is it just state funds? It's actually phil philanthropy. It's a, it's a Massachusetts statewide fund. So it's a Massachusetts COVID relief fund, but all the dollars are coming from private donations from all over the state. They're able to raise about $22 million from individuals and those dollars are now going back into the regions through community foundations, through 11 community foundations, including ours. So we partner with them. So we were, we were able to raise about $360,000 locally with our local fund holders and donors here. And now we're also receiving resources from the Mass COVID Fund and using those to get funds out into the hands of the nonprofits that need them. So the the COVID uh, relief fund is, is utilizing our community foundation and, and the other community foundations around the state in order to distribute these funds. So uh, what kind of organizations and nonprofit organizations or other organizations are, are, good, are a good fit for these kinds of funds to receive from you? How do they apply to receive these funds? Sure. So the, the purpose of these emergency funds are to really get support into the hands of people who live in the region being affected by the COVID crisis. That would include 
families who are struggling to get by because they've lost their jobs, they've lost all the income that's associated with their daily lives. It includes frontline workers who are struggling to manage their work of protecting us or providing us with our food and necessities and still try to be safe. So for instance, uh, we've been providing a lot of support to food pantries who've seen a dramatic increase in demand for food. Mm -hmm. uh, homeless shelters, which have to spend a lot of extra money to be more of a sanitized environment for the poor, for souls who don't have any place else to be. Um, we're actually working with the hospitals. So both Haywood Hospital here in the region and also the um, Alliance Hospitals, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Clinton, and for helping them buy respirators for their emergency room staff because they just need to be protected. So really we're working with folks, another, you know, mock and organizations providing direct services to people directly affected by the COVID crisis in one way or another. So nonprofits would apply to us and it's really simple. You go to our website, which is www.cfncm.org, cfncm.org. And you'll see right on the front page a COVID-19 button. You click on that button, it'll show you how to apply for a grant. And what happens is each week, our grant committee meets and considers the grants that are before us, and we make awards uh, that are appropriate. So how long does this grant um, application, do you expect uh, to last till? Is there a deadline? Is the, is the fund being continuously kind of refilled by those philanthropists uh, throughout the state? What do you expect to see from this fund going forward? You know, this is an experience like no other I've ever been through. And, I, you know, it's hard for us to predict what the future is going to look like. We have uh, still have some resources left. We've given out about 40% of the funds that we've raised, and we continue to get more donations. So there is money in the pot that we have that's local, and we continue to distribute those dollars carefully. And we also carefully distribute the money coming from the statewide fund. But we expect but this will be going on for several more weeks, if not more months, and we'll distribute funds as long as they're available to us and people have a need. So, Do you have some examples of, of places that you have funded already? Sure, so places like uh, Jenny's Helping Hand Food Pantry in the region. Uh, uh, the, as I mentioned, uh, the hospital here in Fishburg, Lemonster and Clinton. Um, uh, our Father's House, which is dealing with uh, folks who are challenged with homelessness. Uh, Luck, who is providing behavioral services to families and, and children who are facing challenges. Um, just a variety of organizations. We also partner with the United Way of North Central Mass, who are getting dollars to other organizations who they work with on a regular basis here in, the re here in Fitchburg, but also across the whole North Central region. Would you say that there are um, a lot of other organizations that are, that are smaller? that would qualify for this grant? Well, yeah, I would say many of our grants, our grants are ranging from $2,500 for a food pantry in a, in a small community to many thousands of dollars to the large organizations. But I would say the smaller organizations that are struggling, food pantries, uh, senior centers, uh, homeless shelters, these are typically small, often volunteer dependent organizations that we're providing grants to. So yes, you know, this is not a size thing. We, we're really blessed here in North Central Mass to have dozens and dozens of small, very civic-minded organizations. I will say the challenge that we face, and this is a real problem we have to look out to the not too distant future, is that many nonprofits that aren't directly serving COVID victims um, are still struggling and suffering because they haven't been able to hold their fundraisers, they haven't been able to operate you know, little leagues, historical centers, all these different organizations that typically run right this time of the year and they raise a lot of their dollars and they're struggling. And our challenge right now is to really shepherd the dollars we have for the most needy people in the region. And then we have to think about how do we help the other nonprofits as we go down the road uh, survive this crisis as well. And I think that's a big question mark we're still trying to grapple with. That was kind of my, my next question, so that's a good segue. What about, um, you know, non-COVID related nonprofits, which you, you typically serve? Uh, are, those, are those grants going to be um, happening this year, or do you anticipate kind of most of the funds going to COVID relief? Uh, how, do you, how do you anticipate um, that kind of uh, allocation of funds? Thank you for asking. I almost forgot because we are running our regular grant programs. 
Now, historically, we would have one big grant program. Every winter, we would have people apply to all of our four grant funds. Our committee would make all the distributions, and by June, we'd be, we'd be finished with the actual grant making. We redesigned our program before COVID even hit. We redesigned it. So we have four distinct grant categories. Uh, they are uh, environmental preservation and animal welfare. Um, they are uh, career readiness and educational access. A community development and critical needs. And we've broken those into four parts of the year. And so right now, uh, in fact, we've just closed the process for the education and environment related grant program. So they're running as well parallel. So we've had a number of organizations who are in the environment or education field make applications to us and we're right now considering those grants. In June, we'll have a new grant cycle where our programs around community development will open up and people can apply for grants for those programs as well. And then our fall program will open up for critical needs, which I'm guessing will be focused pretty much on COVID related materials. But, but we are working hard because I have a great team of people here and most importantly, a really generous board of directors who's put a lot of their own personal time. We're able to keep both the COVID crisis program running and our regular grant program as well. So people should go to the website Take a look at what, uh, what programs we kind of describe the different program types and figure out where they fit and then uh, apply accordingly. And that website is Community Foundation North Central Mass, the acronym for that, cfncm.org. That's so correct. Community Foundation North Central Mass. Thank and you. Uh, you can see all the, all the grant application uh, opportunities available there. Um, and you can sign up for the newsletter where they'll send you uh, reminders and information exactly. as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. The other thing Thanks. I would just say is to, uh, to folks who are philanthropically inclined, we're a great way for you to manage your philanthropy. Rather than setting up a foundation, we'll do all the paperwork for you. You just were focused on raising and distributing dollars, and that's what we're here for. So if folks are inclined to start becoming more philanthropic, we're the place to come to to help them think about how to do that. That was perfect. That was going to be my last question. Excellent. How do we get involved with the Community Foundation if we would like to be more philanthropic? Uh, is there like a minimum amount to donate? Can you specify where your funds go? How personalized can you make uh, your philanthropic addition to the Community Foundation of North Central Massachusetts? Well, that's the other nice thing about community foundations. We really can tailor very specifically to the interests of philanthropists. And we have folks here who have funds. The minimum fund level is $5,000, but you have five years to grow it to $5,000. So for example, many people will hold a fundraiser to remember a loved one and do a scholar or have, we have dozens of scholarship programs or other programs that have of interest that they would raise there will be a golf match or softball games or pie eating contests or what have you to raise funds for their favorite issue. They can structure that fund right here at the community foundation. They raise the dollars, put them in the fund. We manage the dollars for them. And then they tell us how they get distributed and they go out. On the other end of the spectrum, we have people who have uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of donation. They, they've been fortunate enough or smart enough to um, have resources to be significantly philanthropic. And instead of setting up a family foundation, which is very expensive and time consuming, people have set up their funds with us where they will establish a fund. It's called a donor advised fund. And those dollars you receive a tax, the tax break for making the donation to the community foundation. And then you can advise us about where those dollars go each year based on the four and a half percent rule that basically is the federal tax rule. So we'll manage, we manage funds that are important smaller funds, many, many dozens of those, and important larger funds as well. And to us, philanthropy, it's just a wonderful, it's a great business to be in, to help people be giving to their community and the things they care about. And we encourage folks at any level to get involved in philanthropy. And you don't have to create your own 501c3 or family foundation. You don't have to go through all that all that difficulty and all that expense, uh, the Community Foundation can handle all of that for you through their nonprofit uh, ID number and their accounts and their management. And then exactly. you can just say, this is where I want it to go. This is how, I this is how long I want it to go for and et cetera. Yeah. 
Exactly. And you know, you, and we now have a, a, an updated, we're, we'll be launching in June, a new modern online program where donors can go right online and do all the work right online by themselves if they like, or they can call our team and our staff will help direct people uh, in any way that they feel they want to go about it. That sounds so great, Steve. Uh, I'm so grateful for the Community Foundation um, in Fitchburg and, and beyond to your 33 communities, of course. Thank you so much for everything you do and thanks for coming on and chatting with us. Is there anything else that uh, you'd like to add? Anything we missed? I would just say, you know, I just, I started this job about nine months ago. I am so struck by the generosity and the creativity of people here in North Central Massachusetts. It's a wonderful place, as you all know, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be part of the community. Thank you so much. All right, uh, Steve Adams, the CEO and president of the Community Foundation of North Central Massachusetts. You can find out more information by going to www.cfncm.org. And thank you so much for watching Discussing Fitchburg Now on the FATV Workers Credit Union Virtual Studios. See ya.